Guys, if you want to know how to install Linux Mint permanently on your computer or laptop, then this video is for you. This is going to be the part two video from my other video that you can check up in the upper right corner. And this is going to be a full step by step guide for beginners. If you have seen my other video where I showed you how you can make a bootable USB stick with the Linux Mint on it. So you can actually plug it into any computer, any laptop and have an operating system right in your pocket. And if you find that you like Linux and you want to permanently install in your computer, then this video is going to show you how you can do that step by step. So it will be really simple. So stay tuned. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you find this video helpful, give it a like. Let's get started. So the first part of the process is going to be similar to the other videos. So if you have seen my other video, you can skip it to the part where we're going to be installing Linux on the computer. Or if you want to check out the full video, I appreciate it very much. So just like before, we're going to start the web browser. Then in the search field, going to type Linux Mint. Then you just got to press on the download button right here. And as you can see, the current version of Linux Mint is 20.3, the code name Una. The one that was before was Uliana in my other video. And this new version of Linux has three different editions. First one is called the Cinnamon Edition, and it is the most popular one. This is the one we're going to be downloading today. It's actually one of the best. It is very slick and has a lot of features. But if you want to have something more robust and that requires fewer resources, you can download the Mate edition. The installation process is going to be identical. And if you have a very old machine that doesn't have much resources, I would suggest you go with the XFCE edition because it is the lightest edition of Linux Mint and is basically meant to run on almost any machine. You can also find installation instructions if you click on this button right here. It gives you all the different links where you can go and find how to install it on your own. But if you want to watch this video to the end, you can just follow the steps in this video and then you're going to be able to do it yourself. All right, let's keep going. So you just got to click on the download button. Then we just got to find the closest server to our location so we can download it faster. As you can see, there are different servers. So you can definitely find the one that's closest to you so you can have the maximum or the fastest speed to download let's go ahead and try this one as you can see it's 2.1 gigabytes so it will take a few minutes to download so i'm just going to go ahead and fast forward and then we're going to get back when the download is complete okay there we go so download is complete now we need to go ahead and download Balena Etcher. This is the program that's going to be flashing this ISO file to the USB stick. So you're just going to type in Balena Etcher. And there we go. So just going to click on the first link in the search. You can click on the download for Windows. There are also one for the Mac OS if you're using the Mac OS. But we're just going to download one for Windows. Once it's downloaded, you can go ahead and install it. And then we're just going to go ahead and start it. I have already started it here. So this is a very simple program, but it works really good. So next, you just got to click on this flash the file. Then we just got to choose the Linux Mint ISO file that we have just downloaded. Then double click on it. Then we're going to need a simple USB stick. You just got to insert it in the computer, then select target. And as you can see, I have this 125, or oh, it's actually 128 gigabyte USB drive. You can choose a smaller USB drive, like a four gigabyte, but it's really hard to find one nowadays. So I'm going to have to use this large USB stick just for that. But then you can delete it afterwards. You don't have to use it all the time. You just got to format it and it should be fine. And just click select. And then you just got to click on flash. But just as a reminder, guys, before you click flash, make sure this USB stick doesn't contain any other important files for you because it will format it and it will remove all the files on this USB stick. So if there's any important files for you, then they're going to be gone. If you're sure there's nothing there, go ahead and click the flash. And it will take a little bit of time before it's finished. It's probably going to be a few minutes. And like I said before, Linux is really great operating system it's free uh, you don't have to pay for it it has a lot of cool features it is very safe and if you want to check my other video why you should try linux instead of windows you can check out my video i'm going to put the link in the upper right corner and i'll put it in the description as well 
It is very good and this is one of the reasons why I'm installing Linux on my PC because it is very safe. There's much less viruses for Linux than Windows. So if you wanna feel comfortable and safe, you should try Linux. All right, it's almost finishing up. Yeah, there we go. So the flash is complete. We can go ahead and close it. And the next step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and install it on our PC. Okay, let's do that. So after we have inserted a USB stick with Linux Mint in the computer that we wanna install Linux, it could be a desktop PC or it could be a laptop, then go ahead and power it on. And before it starts booting into any operating system, make sure to press F8 on the keyboard. This is gonna allow you to select a boot device and it's gonna be looking like this. It could be a little bit different depending on your motherboard firmware, but most of the time it will be looking like this. From this list, we can choose any boot device that we can use to boot from. So we just gotta choose the USB stick that we have Linux installed. And from this list, you can choose Start Linux Mint 20.3 Cinnamon 64-bit. This is gonna load Linux Mint from the USB stick, just like in my other video. And then once Linux is gonna start on your computer, we're gonna go ahead and install it permanently on the hard drive. All right, there we go. So this Linux Mint is running from the USB stick. So next step we gotta do, you just gotta click on the icon on the desktop, install Linux Mint. First of all, we gotta choose the language. You can choose the language that you like. Then you gotta choose the keyboard layout. I'm just gonna go with the English keyboard. And then this step is very important. You wanna make sure you install additional multimedia codecs. This will allow you to play all the videos and audio files without having any problems. You can also configure a secure boot password. I decide I'm not gonna set it up right now, though you can definitely do that. And actually I do recommend configuring a secure boot password because you're gonna need it to install third party drivers. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you will need a third party driver from NVIDIA because open source drivers, they're not as good, though they work as well. So you can choose to configure it right now or you can do it later. And finally, this is probably the most important and most dangerous step in this installation process because if you do a mistake in this step, you might actually ruin your existing operating system and even lose some files from your computer. So make sure you pay attention to this section so there are a few options you can choose from. The first option, you can install Linux alongside with Windows. So it's basically gonna use the same partition where your Windows is installed, and it's just gonna put all the files from Windows in a separate folder. So it's basically hassle-free. It's gonna install Linux on the same partition, so there is no need to create another partition for Linux. But on the other hand, if your Windows partition is very small, then you might not have enough room for two operating systems at the same time. So I don't recommend using this method unless you're gonna assign a full disk for Windows and Linux together, let's say more than 300 gigabyte. This way you're gonna have enough room for both operating systems. Of course, you can use less than that, but if you plan to install like games or large programs on Windows, it's gonna take a lot of room and then you might run out of room real quick. The second option, you can do a clean installation and it is the most preferable option if you're planning to use only one operating system on the computer or laptop. So it's gonna remove everything from your disk and perform a clean installation. So you only will have Linux Mint installed on your laptop or computer, but you also gotta keep in mind that this will delete all your programs, document, photos, and all the files on the drive that you're gonna be installing it on. So make sure you copy all the files from that drive because after the installation process, you will not be able to recover it or it will be very difficult to recover them. And the third option is the one that we're gonna be using today. We're gonna to choose a specific partition to install Linux and we're gonna keep Windows as well on this machine. So go ahead and press on continue. And there we go. So this is all the drives that are installed on this computer. And keep in mind, Linux file systems are different from Windows file systems. So they do look a lot different. And honestly, for those of you who have never seen Linux, it looks a lot different and it's hard to figure out what is what but the best way to find out which partition you wanna install it on is actually by size. So if you know exactly what size is the partition that you wanna install it on, just go ahead and look on the size column and just click on that drive. I know that I have allocated a 100 gigabyte partition for Linux Mint. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger, but it's very close. I don't have any other 100 gigabyte partitions on this computer. So I'm pretty confident this is the partition that I'm gonna be using. But since we're installing Linux, we cannot just go ahead and install Linux on Windows file system. We're gonna have to format this partition to the proper file system for Linux. 
And just as an example, if you click on install now, you're going to get this message saying that you got to choose the proper partition for Linux. And this means that the file system is not formatted properly. And actually, if you look up in this table here and look on the type column, it says NTFS, which means that the file system is NTFS and it's got to be changed to something usable by Linux. So go ahead and double click on the partition that you want to use right where it says use as we need to choose ext4 journaling file system and this is the most common file system for linux and this is what also makes linux safer because windows viruses are not able to run on linux file systems also put a check mark against format this partition and then for the mount point just put a forward slash and press ok all right so finally we're ready to install linux on the hard drive so just press install now and we get another warning saying that it's going to destroy all the data on that partition where Linux is going to be installed. So make sure there are no important files on that partition and then you can press continue. So the last few final steps, you got to type your account name and then you can choose your password. The rest of the installation process is going to be automatic. So it will copy necessary files from the USB stick. It will install them and then it will automatically reboot. So it can take a few minutes depending how fast your machine is. But I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward to the reboot step. After the installation is complete, you get a shutdown Linux. Then pull out the USB media and press enter. Then you should see this menu where you can choose between two operating systems. One is going to be Linux Mint and another one is going to be Windows. But if you're doing a fresh install of Linux Mint, it's going to start booting straight to Linux. Since I have Windows 10 and Linux installed on this computer, I can choose which one I want to be using. So let's go ahead and press on Linux Mint and as you can see it starts to load it's pretty quick actually because now it's loading from an SSD drive and there we go so Linux Mint is fully installed on your computer this welcome screen is actually pretty good so let's quickly go and have a look through this welcome screen and see what it has basically this welcome screen lets you personalize and customize your Linux Mint you can find all these settings later through the menu, but it's kind of nice they have this welcome screen where all these settings are gathered together so you don't have to dig for them. You can change desktop colors, which colors are going to be used for folders. You can also switch to the dark mode. You can change panel layout. You can use modern or traditional. I like to have a traditional one because the taskbar tabs are larger and you can actually read the name. If you prefer to have just icons, you can use the modern one. You can also set the snapshot type. This is basically the same as a Windows restore point. The system is going to make a restore point that it can recover to. And then you're going to be able to restore it in case something goes wrong. But usually on Linux, that's not the case. It's more stable than Windows. So hopefully you're not going to have to use it. But you can still set up a few restore points. You can choose three, five every day. And then it's automatically going to remove the old ones. You can use the update manager to get all the necessary security updates, software updates and system snapshots. This is like Windows Update, but it's less annoying than Windows Update and it won't force updates on you. So this is very nice. This is another thing why I choose Linux instead of Windows because it lets you decide what you want to do with updates. Another cool option is called driver manager and what it does, it actually lets you update all the drivers automatically. So it finds the newest drivers and then you can install them on your computer. And like I said before, for NVIDIA graphics card, you need to install the proprietary driver. And as you can see here, I got the NVIDIA graphics card, so I do need to install the proprietary driver. I can also use the open source one, but it may not work as good and it may not be as efficient as if I install the NVIDIA drivers. So yeah, just as a tip for you guys, if you use an NVIDIA graphics card, make sure to download the NVIDIA driver as well. This way it will let it use its full potential. There are other tons of different features that you can adjust in Linux Mint and it is a very customizable operating system. So I'm not going to go through them all because it will make it a very huge long video. And this video was meant to be just a basic startup guide to install Linux Mint on the computer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more helpful, interesting Linux videos and click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I'm going to have a lot more Linux videos in the future. And actually soon I'll try to make a video how you can put Windows inside the Linux, not just alongside, but actually you can run Windows programs in Linux. So hopefully I'll make it soon. And this is going to be a really cool video. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, always leave them in the comment section below. I try to read every comment and if you have any problems, I'll try to help you if I can. So I hope you guys have a nice day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.